This right here is my finger blocking the sun. But why am I doing this and why is this so important? Let me explain this by editing this image. As always, you can follow along by downloading the raw files from the link you can find in the description of this video. And now let's begin. Right away, let me show you the difference with my finger blocking the sun versus not blocking it. Take a look at the right side in the dark forest. On the image where the sun isn't blocked, we do have a slightly brighter area, which is caused by the light of the sun. This does result in a dirtier or almost kind of glowing looking area, which we don't have in the image on the left side where I'm blocking the light from directly hitting the camera. You can see right here, this is looking very, very clean, while on this side, it's slightly brighter and has a more dirty look to it. Another thing we can do by blocking the sun with our finger is you can see a very, very minor lens reflection right here. On the image where I'm blocking the sun with my finger, this lens flare is not there. This means we can save a lot of time cleaning up the image from lens flare. Now in this particular image, the lens flare isn't too bad, but a lot of times shooting against the sun like this will produce highly visible lens flare. And once we set up our shot with these two images, we are basically editing the main shot. Then we are copying these editing settings on the second shot. And then we are combining these two images in Photoshop with just a little bit of masking. So let me show you the editing process. First, since we're working with a very contrast rich scene, we want to merge the HDR file. So I'm going to select all five images for the base shot, right click, go to photo merge and choose HDR. I'm not changing anything here, just hit the merge button. And we are repeating this for the finger image. So select these five images, right click, photo merge and choose HDR. Again, you don't need to hit anything. Also, it doesn't make a difference if, the, if my finger looks weird. That's because I moved it around while the camera was taking the HDR shot. So again, just hit merge. And we're done with the HDR merging process. So we can start working on our base image. And what I want to do for this image? Of course, I want to make it way warmer and we want to restore more details from the shadows and the highlights. So how can we do that? We simply want to start in the basic tab. I'm going to change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Landscape to bring up the base saturation. And this will also help restoring a little more detail from the darker areas. Then right away, let me adjust the white balance temperature. Here we can kind of start the color grading process already. I want this image to be warm, so I'm going to bring up the temperature just a tiny bit like this. Perfect. Then for the exposure, I'm going to start by bringing down the highlights. Now we will run into issues when I bring down the highlights. You can see around the sun, we do get this very weird looking area. That's just sometimes it happens with really, really contrast rich scenes like this and HDR. We could probably blend this image manually in Photoshop, but right now I don't want to do it. So I'm going to bring back up the highlights to a point where I can later on fix this area in Photoshop as well. So I think right around here looks okay. As I said, I'm going to fix this weird looking spot later on. For now, I also want to bring up the shadows for more details in the darker areas. And this also helps to create this dreamy effect with the sunlight and the darker areas. So I want to further improve this effect by bringing up the blacks. And this will just make the whole image a lot softer. Okay. And finally, I do want to bring up the whites. We already have a clipping warning in the histogram, but I think pushing the contrast a little more this way just looks much, much better. I really don't care that much about overexposure in this area around the sun because basically the sun is always going to be overexposed. Now let me introduce some texture to make the image sharper. I'm also bringing up the clarity to push the midtones contrast a little. And then for the dreamy effect, what I like to do a lot is to bring down the dehaze quite dramatically. This will further push the overexposure in the brighter areas. So just be aware of that. I just think it looks nice for this scene. Okay. And of course, we also want to bring up the vibrance. All right. That's the image after the basic adjustments. We can take a look at before we're quick and you can see the colors look much, much nicer. Exposure is 
also much better. Now we want to target a few areas locally with a bit of masking to enhance this image some more. Okay, let's start this, open up the masking panel and I want to start in the bottom part. I'm going to use a linear gradient and I'm going to try to roughly cover the highlights of the sky in the reflection of the water. And I'm doing this because I want to kind of create some vignetting effect for the bottom part of the image. That means I'm going to bring down the exposure just a little bit like this, making the bottom part darker. This is not really necessary. I just like the effect this has on the image. So it kind of helps guide the viewer's eye more towards the center. Then I am going to create another linear gradient for the sky. Here I basically want to do the same thing. I want to make the top part darker. Just a tiny bit of the sky, however. And of course I don't want to affect the mountains on each side. So I'm going to click on those three dots and we want to intersect that mask with a sky selection. So only the sky will be affected by this mask. Now with this one set up, I'm going to bring down the exposure. And again, this way we can create this vignetting effect where the border of the image is darker than the center. So this is looking really, really good. I also want to target the reflection of water. I'm going to use a linear gradient like this very, very roughly. And I'm going to say subtract. Let's choose linear gradient. And I'm taking away the foreground like this because I pretty much only want the water to be affected here. And first let me bring down the highlights because the reflection is rather bright at the moment. So by bringing down the highlights, we can fix that, making it look more natural. And I'm also going to bring up the clarity, which works really, really well for reflections like this. Let's bring it up a little more. Perfect. All right, and I want to target this particular mountain on the left side. Now, how can we do that? That's going to be a really cool mask. So I'm going to use a linear gradient coming down from the top like this. Then I'm going to say subtract and choose select sky. Then I'm going to say subtract and choose objects. Here, it's really important to choose the rectangle select mode. And with the rectangle select active, I can just draw a rectangle around the mountain in the back. And as you can see, Lightroom will get rid of that mountain. Now, all that's left to do is we need to subtract a linear gradient from the right side like this. And I'm going to subtract with a brush, cleaning up the rougher edges here. Also, don't want to affect this thing right here, just the highlights. Okay, now what I want to do with this is I want to bring up the contrast. I also want to bring up the highlights to make the light on those trees a little brighter. And I'm going to bring down the shadows for more contrast very, very gently. Uh, let's also bring up the whites. And I guess we can use some more clarity in this area. All right, this looks great. Now again, let's compare the image to before without masking. And here we have the image with masking applied with a much nicer look to it. All right, now let's do a little bit of color grading and I'm going to start in the color mixer. I want to work on the hue for a moment because I personally just don't like these yellow rich color tones from the sun. So I want to change that by bringing down the yellow hue, giving the sun more of an orange look by doing this. All right. I also want to bring down the green hue. And the reason is by bringing down the green hue, I can make the highlights on the mountain on the left side a little warmer. So just like this looks perfect. I'm going to work on the saturation as well. I'm going to bring up orange, yellow and green. And I do want to bring down the blue saturation a bit. I don't really need those blue color tones for this image, I think. All right, that looks nice. Let's also check out the luminance tab. We can further tweak the highlights on the left side. I'm going to bring up the orange luminance. Again, this will affect the overexposed areas of the sky, but I really don't care about them at the moment. And I'm also going to bring up the yellow luminance. Let's raise it quite a bit. 
I actually like what this does to this area right here. And let's raise green as well. Perfect. Looking much better. Now we can do some split toning in the color grading tab. Here we can go really crazy. Let's see. I want to start with the highlights. And of course, we want to keep the highlights warm. So first, set up the hue. I'm going with a very warm color tone right here in the yellow color range. And I'm going to pump up the saturation quite a bit. All right, this looks so much better. Let's also head into the midtones. Again, I'm using a warmer color tone somewhere around here. And again, bring up the saturation a notch. Wonderful, this looks great. And we can do some more color grading in the calibration tab. So for that, I'm starting with the blue primary hue, which I always like to bring down a little bit. I just think it makes the colors look much prettier. So let's drop it quite a lot like this. I'm also going to bring up the saturation here just to give the, the image more punch. Let me also bring up the red and green saturation. Wonderful. Now the only thing left to do is the sharpening. So let's open up the details panel, bring down the radius, increase the details, add masking while holding down the alt key so we can see where the sharpening will be applied and bring up the amount of sharpening done. So this is what our first image will look like. Now we need to synchronize these settings with the second image. So you can see I have my base image selected. I'm going to hold down the control key, click on the second image with my finger blocking the sun. Then we want to hit synchronize, make sure to check all, including the masks right here and then hit synchronize. Okay, and with those two images having the same settings applied, we can now switch over to Photoshop. So I'm going to right click on one of the images, go to edit in and choose open as layers in Photoshop. All right, and here we are. So now that we have these two images on top of each other, I can deactivate the first one to give you a better example of what this does. So take a look right in the center right here. You can see some minor lens flare as well. If I activate this layer, you can see it's gone. We have a much cleaner looking image and we don't have to struggle our way through cleaning up lens flare. This is a huge time saver. Now, what we want to do, obviously, we want to mask out that finger. I'm going to click on the layer mask icon down below. Then we want to grab the brush by pressing B. And I'm going to use a rather big brush. And let's set the hardness of the brush to 100% at first. And I'm just going to paint over the finger like this. Obviously, we will end up with a very visible edge. So I'm going to make the brush a little bigger and I'm bringing down the hardness to 0%. If you don't know the shortcut for this, you can click on this arrow right here and here you can adjust the hardness of the brush. So with the brush set up, I'm going to paint in a few times right here to bring back those sun rays. I do want to have them in this image. I'm also going to paint over every area where I want to have this softer look. So on the mountains in the distance, I'm going to paint back in that glow effect. I'm also going to paint over the rest of the sky, making this area a little softer and brighter this way. Let's also further work on those sun rays to make them look a little more natural like this. But I think I'm pretty happy with that. Let's also reveal some more highlights right here on the mountain. Let's also add some more warmth to those rocks in the foreground. But other than that, I'm really, really happy with how this is looking. So at this point, we can merge those two layers and we can start cleaning up the image. I'm going to use the spot healing brush for that and let's zoom in. Just want to remove a few things here and there. Okay, let's take a look at the area around the sun. I, I want to fix that right now. I'm going to create a new layer. Let's switch the blending mode to soft light. And I'm going to pick a color from right here in the bright area. And now what I'm doing is I'm going to paint over. Actually, we want to change the blending mode to normal. And I want to paint over this spot. 
So this still does look weird. I'm going to create another layer and let's paint over this whole area one more time with a little lower brush opacity and maybe change up the color, giving it a little more saturation so it doesn't look as bright. And now let me create a third layer. Let me set the foreground color to pure white and I'm going to create one bright spot right in the center. So it does look more like a natural sun. All right, and here we have the finished image. So I hope this little tutorial on why and how I'm using a finger to block the sun for images like this was helpful and interesting. Of course, as always, if you have questions left or if you want to add anything, let me know in the comments and thank you so much for watching this video.